Hello Grinder School. This is Code Red Rules coming to you live from a 100NL four table cash game on Poker Stars. We are just getting started here. This is my second session of the day. I usually play around nine tables or so. I will go over the HUD again one more time. I don't believe the HUD my HUD explanation actually debuted on Grinder School. I believe it was re it was in a video that was released on shortstackstocks.com instead. So I can go ahead and do that again. You'll see that I have a a both a row and a row and a column of stats, and this is just to get me by. These are Poker Tracker 3's in ingrown HUD stats and whatnot. And I'll go ahead. I'm just gonna go ahead and fold the eight five. There's no value there. I I would usually like to see a, a flop if if there's a hand that has at least some playable value to it for a min raise. The first hand, the first number are the number of hands. Excuse me. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I have tables lined up just in case some of these go down. So the first number is the hands. The second number is the VPIP. The third number will be the preflop raise. There's another table I can load up for future. The third number is the preflop raise here. The fourth one is the percent chance that they have folded their big blind to a steal. As you can see, this guy's got a fold of the big blind, six out of seven. When you see somebody who has a high big blind, then high fold the big blind to steal, then that pretty much means that you can steal them with any two cards against your positions and not really have to worry about getting locked up. We're going to go ahead and bet this seven. We're betting here to take the pot down, and we'll also get called by any number of draws, and so. In that scenario, we're not going to get called by only hands that beat us. This ace five, on the other hand, we're not going to fold any out if we bet any hands that beat us, but we'll go ahead and check call. And now that the jack has hit, we have we're in a little tough scenario. I think we're going to go ahead and bet it. And I'm going to go ahead and fold the ace three suited. This is interesting. He min raised me. This is a pot limit table, so it's these guys are really awesome. At, and I'm, by that I mean they're not very good at building pots at all. We're gonna go ahead and re-raise the queens. We're gonna make it twelve. Well, I guess. Okay. So back here we have fold big blind to steal, and we also have fold to flop continuation bet. To somebody who doesn't fold any flop continuation bets, so you pay for college folds half the time, he's not really likely one that you want to try and, and bluff a wide range on the flop on, on, a, on a board where he's not likely to put you on a hand. He's going to call you, and unless you're willing to two-barrel him, in those scenarios, we're gonna go ahead and isolate these guys. These guys are limping in some garbage. Specifically this player here. Oh, we got Pizza Tron along for the ride. I don't know necessarily know what he's gonna be doing this with. I doubt he if well he'll if he calls this he'll have an ace. That's for certain. It's a tough spot. He might have ace queen. He doesn't know we're recording, so. Uh oh, he's got a. Right, we're gonna go ahead and isolate the uh, that player. And if you're not familiar, me and Pizza Tron are actually pretty good friends. And he's gonna go ahead and just stick it in against Carmine's, huh? 
is we get min re-raise and we're going to go ahead and call the min re-raise and hope to flop something huge. I would be very surprised if Pizzatron was trying to make a play. But I guess he was. Huh. Go ahead and ask him here what he had. Oh, we get the king, or queen, I'm sorry. We're not going to re-raise the queens this time. He said he had tens. I don't really like that raise with the tens on that board. And we're going to go ahead and float our opponent here and see what he does on this next card. If he checks, we're going to go ahead and check. But if we if he bets again, we're going to be done with the hand. He's such tight. He's such a tight player that re-raising him pre-flop is not really that great because of the fact that he he's only going to see us on an ace king flop, maybe, and then we won't get any we won't get any value from him. So if he was you know even this nine nine, we usually would like to re-raise the queens a wider a lot preflop but since this guy's range is so tight over such a small sample when he opens that it really doesn't make much sense to actually re-raise him and what are we going to do here we cold call right, we're going to go ahead and try and take the pot down here if jf oh blue blueprints has a piece of that he insta called i was going to say if jfm called he would either have pocket jacks or he would have ace king but one thing I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and give up on this hand because this player is not very likely to fold to a I'm gonna go ahead and fold the king queen to fold to a two barrel. If he might if he bets here, I might actually call because I really don't know what he would have other than a missed flush draw at this point. This is such a tough a tough call because of the fact that. He, when he checks behind that turn, he most likely has a draw. The only problem is we really don't beat anything other than his missed draw. But we're getting actually a pretty decent price to go ahead and check call here. I wouldn't be surprised if we see another a smaller pair. 2-4. So he had a pretty big draw uh, on the flop. He had the open-ended straight and flush draw. I was right that he had the flush draw. I just did not expect to see the open and strike draw to go with it. So, it's a pretty loose call by us. It was a, a pretty small bet by him. We're going to go ahead and cold call call the small ace. And we're probably going to go ahead and get off this table once this line goes around. I'm going to go ahead and try and keep good tables up for you guys. And that's not a good card. We'll go ahead and give it up now. So yeah, this table's not that great. I'm looking for players like this on my right. The 57-0, 41-6. These are all good tables. This guy's over here. It looks like he's going to be pretty good. These stats are kind of messed up. Okay. This guy really doesn't fold a big blind, so we're really raising the ace here for value. So if he's planning on calling us the wide range, and he doesn't really fold the flopped continuation bets, it's a pretty bad board to see bet. I'm gonna go ahead and do it anyway, just for just for fun. Maybe set up a future play. It's really tough to know in the first case scenario how he's how he's gonna play. It's really tough. The ace four is like so polar though. It's so hard to get a value from a hand when we actually do hit an ace. He he'll probably cold calls with a hand like yeah ace five so I guess it wasn't really I guess we weren't ahead but most of the time we'll we'll actually split on that board 
but I think not raising the ace there when your opponent is not going to be is going to be calling with a wide range. I really don't like the play. I like knowing the fact that my ace is going to have some value to it, even though it's going to be hard to play. But we're not we're not starting out here too well. And we're going to go ahead and re-raise the, sh the half stack. We don't need to make it too much. We'll make it 15. Just it's 3x as normal raise. No need to outraise anybody here. And we'll be go ahead and getting it in on the flop. And if he shoves, we'll go ahead and call as well. Against half stacks. I'm I'm more than willing to gamble it up with Ace King because he really only needs aces and he needs aces and kings to really have us dominated. And I've said this in other videos: the chance of him having Ace King or aces or kings and me have Ace King is pretty small. And we do have Ace Kings; it is suited, so we have a a pretty decent of value, even if he does have kings there. So I'm going to go ahead and uncheck these blinds, and I'm going to get ready, get another one of my tables ready. going on. <laughs> I usually nine table. So if only four tabling is, is it is kind of slow for me. I, I guess I can go go ahead and talk about what I was going to talk about earlier and not two barreling calling stations. It usually isn't that great of a play. And I'm gonna go ahead and isolate these players. It usually isn't that great two barreling the them because of the fact they're going to call you so lightly. Like they're they're not going to fold bottom pair. If you if they call the flop with it, I don't really like two barreling into them because of the fact that they're just stations and that's what they do and it's how you get your money is from when they call you light down. So I'll I'll throw a C but out there although. Especially if it's a board that I think that I can represent, there's always a chance that they're going to fold. If I have a, a and usually the sample isn't large enough to really, to really be accurate enough. And we've got our knit here raising up again. We're not going to re-raise him. This is also a pretty decent way to conceal our hand. I really don't know what he's going to be raising here is, but at worst, we're not going to be that ahead, and we're going to go ahead and float again, and we'll probably bet the turn if he checks to us, if we call, because he could have 3% hands is like ace-king, queens, uh, ace-king like and jacks are better, and the reason why we'll bet the turn is because we'll try and fold out ace-king, but this is twice he's two-barreled us, so... We're gonna be going ahead and getting off this table. At worst, there I think he has Ace King. I believe he at least has a pair, and at that point he's not really going to be folding to us if we re-raise him. So it's a really good way for us to conceal our hand. I was going to say something else about these. Uh, these I've been seeing a lot of these guys lately with the Intelli Poker. Avatar, they're the same. They're not really the same player. There's a couple different guys. And we can go ahead and get off here. Because there was that player, and then there was this guy right here, who we just played a hand with, or folded it by big blind too. The different, they're different. They're different players, but I, I haven't seen one that really has been all that great. Yeah, we're gonna complete. It's kind of it's kind of amusing. You see all these players with the same avatar. They're all av advertising the same site, and I haven't seen anybody who's really played all that awesome. I 
Also, I don't like to steal the blinds of really bad players. Because you're not really stealing as much as... Uh, or, I'm sorry, not necessarily steal for steal's sake. I'm not going to be stealing their blinds with, say, any two cards against them. Because of the fact that they're likely to call us with any two cards. And they're going to they're gonna take their hands much farther than we are willing to post-flop. So it's just best to not get into a, a situation with them with marginal hands when you'll be able to get into situations with them with better hands in another scenario. Let's see here, we'll go ahead and raise up the 5-6. And... Hmm, I'll go ahead and fold this. It's a, it's a tough decision. I'm going to go ahead and bet this now that it's checked to us. I think we're ahead of JFIM if he check calls us. Part of the value there in cold calling the ace jack suited is being able to bet when it and having the chance to take it down. Even if you had a hand like eight seven suited there or a suited connector, you really need to be able to take down the pots that they give you to take down without a hand in order to make your cold call profitable. If you just try and play fit or fold with suited connectors, it doesn't. It won't work out for you in the end. You just won't get won't get the the true implied odds that you would have. Now, if the guy was a complete maniac, then that's another story. It looks like this table isn't that good. I can go ahead and start up my. I'll start up another one. Trying to find some. Sometimes these tables are kind of hard to to get up. Finding a lot of them that are seven-handed, but then there's three players sitting out. There was an okay one. It looks like. Seven. We get some stats in these guys. So this player here is going to be the person we're going to be trying to play a lot of pots with. Uh, this table's okay. I'm going to need some more stats on Winring to see if he's how bad he is. And it looks like Carmines is our bad player also. I'll go ahead and try get on a couple more tables here. Want to make sure you guys get all the action you can. This guy's pretty tight, looks like, so I'd be, I would be raising the king nine here. Keep moving. <laughs> this is pretty much my how I play. I'll play this. I'll play maybe like 1,500 hands at a time, take breaks after 800 hands or so. But mainly you're just trying to play hands and trying to find the bad players. I wasn't able to close it out in time. Yeah, he might not be too bad. And you just close down the bad tables and you look up for, and you look up and find new ones. Oh, now that player's gone, so we will definitely be having to, we'll definitely be leaving that table. Even though this guy is a 42-4, I don't know, that's close. We're going to fold the queen jack. This guy keeps open lumping, so we're going to assume that he's not very good. Even though we only have, now we have nine hands on him, but. Yeah, he 
he's he's not looking too too good. I do have a pop up pop up stats. Well, we can go th see those. VPIP pre flop raise. I like having the know how often he cold pre cold calls pre flop instead of re raises as this player here. 16, 13, but he rarely cold calls preflop. So that's that's an interesting stat too. And we'll go ahead and cold call at OA if he raises. And we'll go ahead and raise ourselves. We've got a pretty decent amount of hands against a lot of these players. Went to one at showdown. It's I really don't use it that much, but it's okay. Stat to have. Attempt to steal. I think first off, I think fourteen is way too low. Hmm. Do we want to play a pot with Windreen? No, we'll be able to play. We'll be able to find a, a spot where we don't need a marginal marginal hand. It'll be bad enough that we'll be able to play in pots with him. Then we have is him, how often he folds the steals. And we're going to go ahead and get rid of that table. And we have a hand up here. And we're going to go ahead and bet and check two. And we're going to see bet our twos. We don't have enough really hands to figure out if his zero cold or flop continuation bet percentage is accurate. Accurate, and we really just want to take the pot down with that hand. And since we have a zero percent success rate, as we're going to isolate that player, we don't have any read on this guy. We're going to go ahead and give him a walk. Um, this guy's two dollar bet here isn't a bluff. It's going to be something, some retarded value bet with either a ten. He could have the hearts. He could even be doing this with like jack two. He's just trying to get value out of a hand, and so you don't. I would never call here just to to think I was ahead, even though I'm getting ten to one, because I don't think I'm ever ahead here in this case. However, if I had, if I did have like a weak jack, I'd make this call here, partly to find out what kind of hand that he has, because information is worth some amount of money. Like if you had a dollar, I might call the dollar. I don't think to ever be to be ahead, but getting roughly you know eighteen to one, you you never really know. And value in itself is worth a dollar to see what his hand is at showdown. In that case, there's also the reper the repercussions of getting your hand at showdown. So this that's there. Looks like we have a pretty decent bad player here, and we get re raised. Can go back and see what how this guy was playing. This is a tough case scenario. He really didn't re-raise us that much. Um, basically looking to see if he showed any hands down. What does he show down? I'm not really folding here. I might just go ahead and flat instead of four bet. I don't have any stats on him, so I'll go ahead and flat. If he was an aggressive player with those stats, I would definitely 4-bet my Ace King and just try to get it in. But given the fact that that's really the first hand that I've really seen that he played, so we're going to go ahead and play a little bit passively. There, you don't always, you don't have to always say always fold or always four bet ace king preflop and all that all that junk. You can really do however you want. Given the fact that he made it cheap for us, he probably has a decent hand. Although if we flop an ace, we're not really going away from it. So, and those stats just move right there. If he was if he was actually a forty twenty over over a, a wider sample I would definitely four bet. And but I'm not too happy with that. We'll go ahead and get rid of that junk. Whatever it's under the gun lump is. I don't think we've had a C bet workout yet. I mean, this guy's come turned out really good. 
See, I, I've seen a lot of these guys with these Allen and Telepokers that just aren't good. This guy down here is a nit. 8-8. Eight, eight. I don't know. You really want those guys advertising your site? Uh, I guess. Any, adverti any advertisement's a good advertisement. But even though he's across the table from us, we're going to be going ahead and staying here because of the fact that he's a 50-20. And some of the some of the guys 50-20s with a decent stack are 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 worth hanging around for. Like if he only had ten dollars, ten big blinds, maybe twenty big blinds, and he was way over there, I'd probably go ahead and just get off the table and look for a new one. Keep going over these pop-ups. The aggression frequency flops are a bit weird. It's really tough to determine, or I'm sorry, to interpret these numbers. Thirty-eight point eight nine is percent chance that he's aggressive. How often he's aggressive on the flop? If you have a player who has a high aggression frequency, see this guy here. He's a pretty high aggression frequency, so he's either he's either betting or three betting you. I guess he really hasn't been check raising, but he'll raise you in position and whatnot and try and take it down on the flop, turn his hand into bluffs if he has a real hand. Twenty. This guy's four zero. Uh, I really don't like a limp here. King seven really isn't worth it. If it was suited, I'd go ahead and limp. King seven offsuit is pretty bad. If it was a seven. I'm definitely going to be limping in there. And this guy's flop aggression is, is pretty high, but it's also probably a pretty small sample. And he doesn't really fold, and he folds a decent amount of flops too. There's a difference between fold to continuation bet and fold to flop bet. One is continuation bet is when he cold calls behind or when he's just called pre-flop. Fold to flop bet is is everything else is when he's limped in, when he's when it's checked around in the blinds. Sometimes you'll see a player who has a high fold to flop bet, but a low continuation bet, and those the, the stats get kind of confusing. A lot of times, though, if you don't have enough stats in a guy for a fold to continuation bet, and usually the fold to flop bet is a more accurate portrayal. We might go ahead and limp in. We'll probably go ahead and get off this table. Doesn't look like it's gonna be that great. There's no need to really stick around on 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 marginal on marginal tables. There's really no no need to. There's enough tables around. There's enough enough donkeys out there that you you don't have to set a set at a marginally bad table and to sacrifice. Why did I fold? Yeah, because I had to figure anyway. I wasn't gonna flop any again. So there's no there's no need to sit around and wait for tables to get better. We're gonna continue to try and play pots with this guy. This isn't necessarily an implied odds play as much as our hand's probably better than his. And we don't need a lot of money behind for this play to be correct because of the fact that we're going to take it down a lot post flop without having to hit two pair. And he's gonna be stacking off with us pretty light. Like he's doing this with any two cards, maybe. This isn't a good flop for us, though. We're gonna go ahead and bet. If he ch if he calls us, he's probably got a spade, and not the ace. He would have bet the ace probably. See, like we just take it down there post flop. We hit. We had a queen. We didn't have to hit two pair. It's just a matter of being able to outplay your opponent. So and uh, min raise against a min raise preflop, it's really hard to not get implied odds, and you can play a lot of hands, especially when you're in position. Man, all these players are leaving. Hopefully, they get filled up. I find it really odd sometimes that you'll see a lot of good players leave, even though it's a really good. Uh, a really good table. This table isn't that. Yeah, we're getting off this table. 
Like, it's kind of amazing sometimes. You'll just see a table break down. Yeah, we're not going to play against him. I mean, we're probably ahead, but... Eh. He raised it pretty big. There's a chance he actually has a decent hand. If I had Ace-10 here, I'd probably go ahead and go all in with him. It's more of a cash game play. Ace-4 suited doesn't really play all too well. I'll be able to take his money. Find a, find a much better spot than Ace-4 suited. These are... That's a good sign, though. Love it when short stacks play, and then can't wait four hands to be dealt in the hand. There's a lot of players out there that don't really like short stacks, and a lot of times I don't understand why, because most players don't play a short stack correctly. And, and they're usually pretty bad at it. You'll see players shove an under the gun raise with a pocket pair, which is a pretty bad play. You'll see... You just see all kinds of stuff that you would see, you would think like a normal short, uh, a short stack player shouldn't do or an optimal play and you know they have tight stats but they're still not very good I, I don't understand it sometimes I would have substituted you guys with another table but the table turned out to not be very good so when we'll get one to come up here you know we can watch Pizza Tron play like I said I'm pretty decent friends with him him and I will will actually play. Uh, we'll sweat sweat each other on on tables, and we'll play together. At, we move up stakes and, and stuff. So, it, we, him and I have very similar games. I just don't I don't agree with his flop raise, uh, with his when he had pocket tens. We're gonna go ahead and f flat here. And we'll check fold. See the the, the thing was the, about playing against bad players is that you'll have a set value because they're likely to stack off with a wider range. Whereas against some aggressive slash good players aren't stacking off with that wide of a range. So that, that way cold, uh, set camping with them is very difficult. But when you're playing against players that are going to stack off widely, say with top pair decent kicker or not even that, it's giving them too much credit, then it's you can set mine those players, and you also can set mine the really really tight players that have a really really narrow range that they're only raising on. I said they're only they're only raising a narrow range. Um, this is a tough one because he doesn't really fold the C bet. See, this is I'm making a decision when I want to isolate him, but I think I do. I'll be able to value ton him post up if I flop a pair. And he he's also pretty tight, so he'll also open lump and fold a lot, which generally actually is a pretty bad play. I think I've said in a previous video where you can open lump pocket pairs under the gun. And I've gone ahead and revisited that, and I no longer suggest the open lump of the pocket pairs from any position. I, it might not be a minus EV play, I just don't think it's the best play out there. I think the best play is to normally just raise them. And that's usually, I'm usually open raising pocket fares from, from any position. Come on here, let's get a table up. I gamble. Alright, we got one, we got one here. Bloop, another pot limit table. Trying to get as much action as I can. There really hasn't been very many big pots, just, and that's usually how it goes for a decent amount of time. Is you just play small pot after small pot and try and take them down. See, I don't mind the six-way raise pot with this too. We probably won't be stacking off. It'll depend on who our who our opponent is. We are also suited here. Have another table ready, and since it's so such a 
everyone and their brothers in it. And if you can't see these stats, nobody folds the C bets. <laughs> Don't even. I'm not even going to bother C betting it. And if I get a decent price, if this, if Winring decides to make a really bad continue uh, bluff, say four dollars, something ridiculous, then I'll go ahead and, and peel one off. But chances are that one of these guys does have a pocket pair, and I'm not really ever folding fours or sixes on this board. And or they could have a set two through two through five, so you're looking at twos through sixes aren't going anywhere, and so I'm pretty much hoping that sevens through nines are going to be folding. I don't expect tens or better to fold to continuation bet. So now if there were two diamonds out there, I would definitely see bet it and hope to get it in versus the forty twenty. Not as much as in the 30... I'll try and get in the risk 30 slash 8, but the 17 slash 4 is going to have a pretty pretty uh, a narrow range if, I, if I'm trying to get it all in. If I had two overs and a flush draw, I'll go ahead and bet if he checks to me. He checks to me, I bet. And I'm going to isolate these guys. The table isn't so bad. I don't know what this guy's check min raising the flop with. But I really don't have anything, so. Raise the tens. Yeah, and that's a decent scenario. I'd rather have them cold call and fold the flop, but free three and a half big blinds. I've put in 1,700 hands today. Ooh, we get re-raised. I don't like my hand as much anymore for several reasons. One, we don't have any stats in this player. If this guy was our 40-20 or our 50-20, then I'd be looking to get it in. However, given that he doesn't look to be too retarded yet, then I'll go ahead and fold. Ooh. That's tempting because JFM is such a bad hand. I just don't expect D, D Wizzy to fold. I hope to hoping that he has Ace King in the beginning in a flip. The mainly the reason is he's not going to be cold. He's not going to be re raising me too lightly because of the fact that I'm another gun raiser. So I'll go ahead and fold. If I had Jacks there, I'd probably go with it. For only 40 big blinds. And I'm not worried about JFM at all. He's got 92 cards. I'm in pretty decent position here, though. I got looks like I got some really loose players on my right. I don't know what you're thinking about. If you have an ace, go ahead and call. An overlump. This guy's got a pretty sh has a short stack, and so I don't necessarily have to isolate. Had he had maybe double his stack, I'd be more likely to isolate raise him. Had I known that I was going to flop two hearts and two overs, I would have raised him. Let's see, he bets. I'm going to go ahead and raise the flop. I'll go ahead and try and take it down. He's probably not going to be too strong. If he shoves us, we'll probably be getting two to one enough to make the call. But he folds, which is a perfectly acceptable scenario. And we get squeezed by a tight guy. Now, if Stevie Ray decides to go ahead and call this, I will also call this because I'll definitely be getting really good odds. but he doesn't. So, although it's pretty close, it's pretty close being able to do this, but not close enough. Like I said, I had Stevie Ray come in too, and I have a chance to set a, pop a set on and get both those players in. 
then that's a different story. Because you'll find that, like, say that every once in a while, Mikula will have kings, and Stevie Ray will have aces, and Stevie Ray will cold call to be tricky, and then I'll overcall with my sixes, and then I'll stack them both on a queen high flop if I, you know, or on a ten high flop if I got my set, and I won't even have to raise at all. Although that is in a dream world. It, it, it happens every once in a while. Chances are, though, if you do flop a set, you're going to get at least get one of their stacks, if not both. It depends on what they both have. And, you know, you'll run with a set over set, too, but that's very rare. I also don't think... See, he's also not doing it that lightly. You're only 500 hand, In 500 hands, he's only raised 5% of the time. So that's a very, very narrow range. 5% is roughly... Tens are better, and ace king, and he would only be re-raising there with with ace king would be the weakest hand. He and probably queens and queens are better there. Stevie Ray could have a much wider range, but if he calls the re-raise preflop, then he probably has a decent hand himself. guy sitting out too. Man, this guy over here has no money. We don't know if Physics is actually a decent player. Hmm. It's a judgment call. I think I'll go ahead and 40-20. Uh, 57-20. Do a search. I guess I'll be getting off this table. Isolate. Queen seven. Yeah, it's tough to see because this PT thing is there. At least they moved it from over the pot. Min re raised, which I really don't mind right now because of the fact that he's doing this with a very, very, very narrow range. That this is a very easy call and hope to hit a 10. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. No, if he checks here, he'll have kings. I'm not even, you can't even bother taking it away from him, he's not folding. Okay, I'll but guarantee you, he has back of kings. Yeah, go ahead and fold. The ace king, early position raise, we're out of position, we're not gonna go ahead and re-raise here. We'll go ahead and fly it again. It'll if he was over here, I would re raise. And this is gonna be a tough way to play it. I think he folds ace queen if I check raise, so I don't want to check raise. Okay, now I'll check raise, hoping that he has ace queen. Or pocket kings. It's going to be really hard for him to put me on ace king. We want to be able to shove the river. We'll have 46 left. 45. He's going to put us on the ace, but he's going to have a really hard time folding ace-queen. Because he's not going to be able to put us on ace-king. So, All oh, that, too, is just sealed the deal for him. And we both have ace-king. Shucks. Oh, well. But he can't... It, it, if, he, if he does have ace-queen there, it's going to be so hard for him to fold. Or kings. Oh, he might have folded kings in the river because of the board double paired. 
but oh well. I'll go ahead and leave that one. I have another one ready for us. I don't know how long I'll be staying here. But we'll go ahead and see about this. I can go ahead and rep the king. So that was your big hand, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry we didn't win it. I'm sorry we had to split it, but oh well. Oh man, this is close. I kind of want to isolate these guys again. I won't. I'll be good. I'll be good. Although I might actually do it there sometimes. That would be actually, but this board is actually would be a really bad board to see. But it's this board hits everybody. No one's folding an eight, a queen, maybe not even a pair and a king, clubs. No one's folding. So that's Jack ten nine, uh, double suited. Not a very good board to see. But and we'll isolate the jacks against the knit limper. Man, this table isn't that great either. I probably won't blind steal against this guy because this guy's the bad player. And we're going to go ahead and just try and take it down right now. Maybe someone will fold a queen. We don't expect them to fold an ace, but they might fold a queen. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Or jack. Jack or 10, jack or 10. Eh, clubs. That pretty much means we're not going to be any good. If the, once the club hits, yeah, he had ace too. I don't expect him to fold an ace, but if he had queen jack, there's a chance he might fold it. So that's why I'll, I'll see about that in the three people. Uh, it doesn't really matter here. Short stack, I'll make it four. We're going to be going with this hand regardless of what happens. Even on post slop, we'll go with it. Trying to get a new table here. Ace. We'll try and get them. We'll try and price them in, but it doesn't really matter. We could have checked behind the flop, but he's only got ten bucks. He's either going to do something or he's not. Another Intelli poker sign. This is the fourth one since we've been playing, and they're all been different. I'll go ahead and bet and check two with the five six. We have a gutter. open-ended and a flush draw, or double gutter with the flush draw. I don't want to bet here and, and have to and have to decide whether or not we want to call us all in, because he's pretty short. So we'll go ahead and take a free card and run good. And we'll get it in. We run good. Yeah, you see, he flopped top two. But he gives us two cards for $2. We get a gut shot and a backdoor flush draw. We had decent outs. Yeah, he saw we sucked out, but he gave us the opportunity to. So, we'll go ahead and steal here with the king eight suited. And now that we can get off this table. Around to us, King Ten, mainly for value, mainly because he folds a lot of blinds. Two of two, it's better than zero for two. I was playing some two hundred last week, and see some of like the weirdest, the weirdest plays. Players with 
really nitty stats, 9-4, 10 two, defending, a really wide range in the big blind. And we're good. 8-5 suited here. Our players fold the blinds a lot. 91-75 over a large, very large sample. So we can take the down. I mean, I think a lot of times players just don't steal enough because of the fact that you're, the players aren't going to really play back at you as much as you think they are. So it's okay to... You can actually open up a pretty wide range as they're on the cutoff, and Yes, the dollar and a half is definitely worth it, a big blind and a half. How many, check in your PT databases and check how many hands, on average, win a, a big blind and a half per hand, and only really aces and kings is that much. Maybe, maybe queens, maybe ace-king, but speaking of ace-king, um, what table were we getting off of? We're getting off of that one. And since this, this, it was the regular who opened, I'm going to go ahead and re-raise him and try and get it heads up with Avensis. But now that Renworm cold calls, we are probably going to be dead here. We're going to go ahead, do we want to raise that? We're gonna go ahead and see about this, and we're gonna assume that Runworm is gonna shove us with the nuts. He might fold Ace King. He's only cold calling his preflop with Ace King, Aces, Kings, and Queens. He's not. He was not really cold calling with any wider range, and so he's either making a play on me here with Ace King, which I sincerely doubt, or he does have a really a really good hand. So, in that scenario, I actually like the re-raise with the Ace King because of the fact that our opener is a pretty tight range, pretty wide range. I'm sorry, and we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing against this Donk up here. So I mean, Ren, I've played with Renworm a lot today alone. He's got I've got 1,300 hands on him, and we're gonna be going with Jacks against the 5310. So our squeeze is mainly for value. He might cold call. I doubt he calls us with the Ace Queen preflop, but he might for some reason if he decides getting aggro. So yeah, he's 1210. So he's opening there a pretty. He might actually cold call with with Jax behind. He might call the bet with Jax in the flop, and not shove us all in. So his shove there is either going to be at the bluff or the nuts. And given his putting his ranges together, like if I had kings there, I'm definitely not folding. If I had ace queen there, I I probably wouldn't have squeezed with it. So. It stinks that we get to lose. We lost four to big blinds and and whatnot, but yeah, what can you do? Our video is getting here pretty long. We've got about we're in for about 54 minutes, so we'll go ahead and go one more rotation, then we'll go ahead and shut them down. This is a tough hand, actually, because we're in with three nits. If I can actually might be able to get a lot of money here if I flop, a, if I flop the nuts. Against them in re-raise, I'm getting a pretty decent price here. I'll be getting four to one. I don't know what this Batters UK guy has. Although I'd rather have like eight nine suited here or any pocket pair. Ace ten suited is going to be decent too because like I said I was getting five to one four to one
and maybe I'll get a free card. A nine. Ten isn't a good card. I don't want to hit a ten. Although if it checks around again, I might bet it. Protect it. Yeah. I don't know what this guy was doing. He might have had pocket jacks too. It's kind of a donkey way to play the hand. So we can go ahead and unpost. We put in, well, I don't know how many hands we got in. Oh, I guess we got in about 300 hands, because I played 1500 in my first session. So, it's pretty swingy. I'm going to go ahead and fold the ace 10 here, because this guy's pretty tight, even though he's 9 6. Attempt to steal is only 15. Not liking, the, not liking ace 10 against that range. Sitting out there, we can sit out here, and we're gonna sit out there. So, put in about 300 hands. I don't think we uh, ran all too great. I can go ahead and bring the the stats up, my overall stats for the day. I don't, ha I won't have the set, just the sp specific session stats. I don't think we really didn't play that many interesting hands. Uh, the king five suited here. You can choose to lead or check call. I'm not gonna lead. I'll play. A, I'll play a little bit tighter only because I don't want a worse flush shuttle fold right now. And I, me betting that hand, I'm only gonna get action. I think I'm not gonna get any folds from an ace. So we can check call one bet. We run good. He's going to be checking behind like 100% of his hands, so we're just going to lead 10. And that's a pretty bad card. I'm debating whether or not to check call. I think I'm going to go ahead and check call. I don't think he calls us without a heart anyway. So, And if he has the ace of hearts, then we suck, but... There's a chance he'll be bluffing here on the four flush that he probably won't call us with. That's why I went ahead and checked to him. There's a chance he has the ace of hearts though too because he bet the flop. But oh well, what are you gonna do? <laughs> See, there's no reason to at all to bet the nine. There's no, okay. We can go ahead and look back at that hand like how he played it. He has middle pair and the nine high flush draw. So there's no reason for him to bet that river at all. He he specifically turns his hand into a bluff when he has a made hand. If I have a set or two pair, I'm not going to call him. So his flush is good, regardless of whether or not we call him. And the reason why we're not calling him with a set or two pair is because of the fact that we don't beat a heart. And any any heart there is ahead. Do, 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 do. I think we'll go ahead and re-raise Nic Nicholas. His his turn call is pretty bad too. I'm not a real I'm not a real big fan of his turn call. We're going all in with the thirty with the forty twenty. I just don't know what the hell he was doing. Oh well. That's the reason why you call. And we flop a ton. He'll be shoving the ace of spades, I believe. He'll check call with the ace of spades. Let's go ahead and get it in. I've seen him they'll call with like King Queen with King of Spades. Uh Re-raising 10s there is, is mostly for value pre-flop. Our hand loses a, a lot of value and playability once we see a flop with a hand like pocket 10s. And like we said before, he'll he'll call the re-raise pre-flop and not necessarily go all in post-flop. Or as opposed to Renworm down here when we re-raised him, there's a good chance that if he's calling our pre-flop raise a re-raise, then he's probably going to be going with it uh, post-flop too. 
So, and this is one of those things we wanted to remember. We wanted to isolate this donkey down here when we raise the ace king. So I don't, I don't know how I'm how I'm doing in this session. But we've passed the hour mark, which is kind of unfortunate. I guess I can go ahead and just sit out that hand, too. We'll go ahead and bring the stats up. So I w was at 1549 hands, and I'm now at 1822. So we played nearly 300 hands. And overall, I'll get the profit up here in a second. I've managed to lose a hundred bucks while playing. So lost a buy in. Which is kind of unfortunate. Didn't really get any chances to really win too much. Um Yeah, I guess it's not wasn't that exciting of a of a of a video. Hope you guys have learned something. This has been Coded Rules for Grinder School, coming to you live. Good look at the tables.